Hey, what's up guys? Gons here for the Face Like the Sun YouTube channel. Haven't done a CERN watch in quite a while, so I thought I'd give an update about what CERN is up to. Interestingly enough, a bunch of stuff hit the newswire in the last week or so regarding CERN. And one of the things that they've been talking about for a while now is this discovery of the pentaquark and now the potential of a new particle that was seen around 750 GeV in energy, about five times the mass of the Higgs boson. And so they've been looking at the data again to see if this discovery was legitimate or not, or if it was just an anomaly that the detectors caught. Now again, nothing necessarily new here, but if they make this new particle an official discovery, it would definitely change the understanding or the standard model of physics because what had happened was they predicted a particular model 50 60 years ago and the large hadron collider has confirmed a lot of those particles that were theorized uh, but there's a lot that wasn't theorized that they're discovering um, what they call mysteries for example forbes reported that the existence of new particles might be explained by supersymmetry, technicolor extensions, or extra dimensions. And, you know, we've been talking about how CERN has been looking into extra dimensions on the official front for a long time. And of course, you can see all the interviews with Anthony Patch and other videos I've made on CERN where, you know, we look at some of the more wild possibilities about what they're actually doing over there in Geneva. Cosmos reported Higgsino or hallucination, new particle detected at CERN, maybe. So again, they're looking over the data. There is a threshold by which the data has to be in order for CERN to announce an official discovery. The International Business Times reported CERN LHC experiment calls Fermilab's discovery of exotic tetraquark into question, which basically reports a similar thing about how they're doubting the data. CERN LHC update, the hunt for particle that may break physics's standard model to resume soon. And they're getting ready to do another round of particle smashing coming up here in the next few months. And again, just stating that they recalibrated the data that they discovered back in December. And it states, quote, while this is certainly an improvement, it still falls short of the gold standard of five sigma accurately needed to confirm the existence of a particle whose discovery might just open the doors to an unknown realm of reality. As a result, confirming or disproving this particle's existence will be the key focus of researchers at CERN when high energy collisions resume next month. So that's sort of an overview of what CERN's been up to recently, at least in the public front. Now again, underground, behind the scenes, they may be doing some things that are a little bit more nefarious. Now keep in mind that there are a lot of accelerators around the world. CERN is not the only one, it is the biggest, but there's a ton out there. And here on the list of synchrotron radiation facilities, it's interesting to note that while CERN contains the highest energy level with their Large Hadron Collider with 7,000 GeVs, the next biggest one is in the U.S., the Tevatron at the Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory, which we've reported on as well, Fermilab, which is in DuPage County, Illinois. And the CERN website themselves have reported a few different stories in an opinion piece called Charting the Future of CERN. It talks about how in the next few years, CERN is going to collect more data with a Large Hadron Collider. And it says from, quote, other particle and astroparticle physics projects around the world. Now, I had never heard that word astroparticle before, so I looked it up and it seems basic enough. Astroparticle physics, also called particle astrophysics is a branch of particle physics that studies elementary particles of astronomical origin and their relation to astrophysics and cosmology. It's a relatively new field of research emerging from the intersection of particle physics, astronomy, astrophysics, detector physics, relativity, solid state physics, and cosmology. Now, one of the biggest problems they're having is the understanding or the problem of dark matter and dark energy. And, you know, a lot of that speaks into, as a Christian, and looking at this kind of thing, to me, it's just more proof that God created this world and that there is information and structures that we just don't understand, but the information is there, which means it took a mind of some kind to place it there beforehand, right? If there is an intelligibly understandable 
construct to creation, to the fabric of the universe, then there has to be an intelligent mind that was there before to place it there. Otherwise, it wouldn't be understandable. It wouldn't be rational. But anyway, that's sort of a side philosophical rabbit hole that I won't go down here. But I found it interesting that the experimental facilities for astral particle physics is, for example, Ice Cube in Antarctica, which is the longest particle detector in the world, was completed in December 2010. The purpose of the detector is to investigate high-energy neutrinos such as dark matter, observe supernova explosions, and search for exotic particles such as magnetic monopoles. And then there's one in France, Argentina, obviously CERN. There's one in Greece. There's one in Italy. But the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory was kind of fascinating, so I looked it up. Basically, it's a neutrino telescope, and it's stationed in Antarctica. It says its thousands of sensors are distributed over a cubic kilometer of volume under the Antarctic Sea, similar to its predecessor, the Antarctic Muon and Neutrino Detector Array, Amanda. Ice Cube consists of spherical optical sensors called digital optical modules, each with a photomultiplier tube and a single board data acquisition computer which sends digital data to the counting house on the surface above the array. And this is very fascinating because there is this complete tie-in with these particle accelerators and space and what's out there. And it's interesting to look at some of the photos of them creating this thing in Antarctica. It was funded by several sources, including a couple from Belgium, Germany, Japan, Sweden, and the USA. The Department of Energy Office of Science has also funded this thing. So again, it's always interesting to see how much of the scientific community in its scientific dictatorship have spent money and just research and time, effort, and energy into trying to understand creation. And when the American military gets involved and a lot of the red tape, it's just really hard to grasp exactly what they're doing. And, you know, a lot of it can be compartmentalized. These scientists, you know, are probably well-mannered people trying to help, you know, the world discover what creation is made of. And it's really difficult to truly know exactly what they're doing down there. But again, it's just one of those things where you go down the rabbit trail of looking at the scientific dictatorship, the constructs of the scientific environment and what they're really doing and why. Why is it so important for them to understand this stuff? You know, it's just interesting to me. And I always bring this up and you can make this argument for, you know, space stuff too, but. There are people starving on this planet. One out of eight people still don't have access to clean water or food. Yet, you know, we're sending a team of people and building these large facilities in Antarctica to look for space particles, basically. And for what purpose? Uh, just to understand creation better. It just seems like there has to be a deeper agenda behind it that's not very public. And I wouldn't be surprised, again, if there is some sort of occult agenda, because a lot of these scientific progress. If you think about the whole talk with NASA that, you know, we've looked at a lot and stuff, its origins are very satanic to be plain. So I don't think it's out of the question to consider the, the strong possibility that things like CERN, the things like Ice Cube and these other facilities, yeah, on the surface are doing quote unquote science, but at a deeper level, these scientists are merely worker bees to establish and to build some sort of greater thing that they're not even aware of. And it's just fascinating to think about the globalization of science as well. In this piece, Charting the Future, if you keep reading, it just talks about how in order for a CERN to maintain its position as a focal point for accelerator-based physics, they have to play a leading role in global affairs to develop technologies to serve a range of possible physics scenarios. For example, research and development on superconducting high field magnets, high gradient, high efficiency accelerating structures, and novel acceleration technologies. And then furthermore, CERN is playing a leading role in international design studies for future high energy colliders that could succeed the LHC in the medium to long term. And then it says global planning in particle physics has advanced greatly over recent years with European, US, and Japanese strategies broadly aligning and the processes that drive them becoming ever more closely linked. For particle physics to secure its long-term future, we need to continue to promote strong worldwide collaboration, develop synergies, and bring new and emerging players, for example, in Asia, into the field. Within that broad picture, CERN should steer a course 
towards a future based on accelerators. Any future accelerator facility will be an ambitious undertaking, but that shouldn't deter us. We should not abandon our exploratory spirit just because the technical and financial challenges are intimidating. Instead, we should rise to the challenge and develop the innovative technologies needed to make our projects technically and financially feasible. So again, in this opinion piece charting the future of CERN, there's not a single mention of what CERN really does. What purpose does it really have? And they're spending so much money on this and so many people are being hired and are going into this field. And, you know, I suppose the narrative is that, you know, we're just trying to create a better understanding of the world around us so that we can better everyone's lives. And, you know, I think at a certain level, people have that sentiment and even that it's true in a certain regard, but it certainly does feel like something else is going on and they're not being upfront with their true agenda. And uh, we just have to, again, keep an eye on CERN. There's already been plenty of speculation about it. And, you know, a portal didn't open up publicly to the world. But who knows, maybe there's some stuff going on that's very bizarre. And of course, the world certainly has gone very bizarre, especially in the world of politics recently and things like that. And, you know, the deception continues as the world powers try to bring about their control system ever more. So again, we just have to stay vigilant, we have to stay sober-minded, and we have to hold on to the word because ultimately I think the Bible is pretty clear about who created all this. And, you know, maybe not the scientific exact explanation of the constructs, but the complexity, the intricacy, the mystery, as scientists call it, about the fabric of creation, I think is just good evidence of God's existence and the reality that this place is beautifully and wonderfully made. And we are privileged to experience it and be a part of it. And from the biblical view that there is this world beyond this physical world, which is the spiritual dimension. And I think there's multiple levels in that. So in any case, those are just some of my thoughts and just a little update on CERN. Hope you guys have an awesome day. God bless.